ಪದಾಪದಾಪದಾಂಸಂಪದಾಂಕಾಮ ಶ್ರೀರಾಮ ಭೂಯ ಭೂಯ ನಮ್ಯಹಂ ಜೈ ಶ್ರೀಮನ್ನಾರಾಯಣ ಪ್ರಿಯ ಭಗವದ್ಬಾಂಧವ ವಿ ಆರ್ ಬ್ಲೆಸ್ಡ್ ಟು ಡೇ ಆನ್ ಎ ವೆರಿ ಆಸ್ಪೀಷಿಯಸ್ ಡೇ ವಿ ಕನ್ಸಿಡರ್ ಬಿಕಾಸ್ ಟುಡೇ ಈಸ್ ಆರ್ದ್ರ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ಆಲ್ಸೋ ಪುನರ್ವಸು ಬೋತ್ ಸ್ಟಾರ್ಸ್ ಅತ್ ಏರ್ ಅಪ್ ಟು ನಾವ್ ಇಟ್ ಈಸ್ ಆರ್ದ್ರ and from now on it's punarvasu you know very well ardra is the birth star of our beloved acharya ramanuja swami and punarvasu is the star of lord shri rama so both are today joined with each other to say rama and ramanuja it is said as per our great acharyas versions the one adishesha on whom the lord reclines took the form of lakshmana when lord himself became rama god comes down to this earth or takes different forms to satisfy his devotees and of course to fulfill different needs of this world whenever he comes down all his parivaram all his subjects also keep coming down along with him in a form that is needed it is said the one who takes the form of adishesha in his divine abode called paramapadam and the same one became lakshmana his brother rama's brother when he became rama when he became krishna and adishesha became balarama and when the lord in this kali yuga has taken the form of a deity that adishesha appeared in the form of ramanuja acharya that is how our acharyas considered 
while talking the grace of acharya they said adho jagadadharasesah tadanu sumitranandanavesah तदुपरी धृतालमुसल विशेष तदनमुरेश भजयति राज भजयति राज भजयति राज भवीरो वेन दे सिंग द ग्रेज ऑफ आचार्य दे सेट इट इज दैट आदिशेष took the form of ramanuja acharya and of course whenever they come here they are not coming like us we are driven by the karmas and that's how we come here to just consume the allocated karma but they won't come like that they come down to this earth to release us from the karmic bondages it is their choice for us is our birth is a chance or a choice what do you think chance no our birth is not chance it is a choice but not your choice it's his choice <laughs> because we never put an application to our mom and dad mom please give me a birth <laughs> so it's not our choice but it is for sure choice of god he thought this is the better way that he can come out of the karmic bondage and then he chose a body brought us down to this earth and we are like this so it's for sure his choice and we are here but acharyas are not like that acharyas are deputed by the lord to come down to this earth they show the path to us they intercede on our behalf to the lord and then they convince him like anything and he takes care of us then if the grace of guru is not there with us probably we won't be able to come out of these bondages a great poet said we are like the lotuses you know lotus right nice beautiful lotus it blossoms when the rays of sun fall on that and when sun goes back shirts then the the lotus will be slowly slowly closed so opening and closing depends upon the sun's movements to the lotus so one day it seems the lotus thought yeah it is the sun who is taking care of me and when he shines i am blossoming and when he goes back i am closing so i am totally depending upon the sun so let me care for sun only but what is the place the lotus takes birth dirt dirt from dirt the lotus comes though it stands in the dirt but it is untouched to the dirt comes out of the dirt but it never touches the dirt even the dirt dropped on that it 
never touches with that and it just freely moving so the lotus thought okay i born in the dirt that's okay but it is the sun who is making me blossom and shirt so let's be with the with the sun and the lotus came out of the waters out of the dirt and then stood on the shore now what happens sun shines the sun was allowing the lotus to blossom when the lotus was standing in the water but when it came out of the water the same sun who was allowing to blossom now dries up the lotus the lotus will be totally dried withered with the same sun rays kamalam jaladapetam soshayati ravihi natoshayati this is what our acharyas we think it is god's grace on us always shines and that's how we are taking the form that's how we are growing that's how we are glowing so let us stick on to god that's what normally we think but god is great no doubt about it god is really really great and there's no second thought about it but he never cares his devotees just because the devotees are coming to him he cares such devotees who come through a guru they only will be graced by him because guru's grace is like the waters to the lotus god is like the sun he always blesses us with his rays as long as we are sticking on to the waters we are standing in the waters that long he allows us to blossom and if we leave the waters and then goes to the shore the same sun dries us up because god has compassion god has supreme commandability both are there with him he is nirankusha sarveshwara right he is uh, uncontrollable by anybody and he got every power with him undoubtedly he got compassion too there is a compassion and there is supremacy nirankushatvam and also karuna sagaratvam both are there in him and he is common for both among those two ishwaratvam will be constantly dominating in him because that is the need of you know the day if one is not holding the stick or the whip in hand nobody is going to listen i think most of you people in america know it very well if you are in the highway and the accelerator pushing the car goes on and on but when you see somewhere the blinking lights automatically the brake will be starting functioning you know it comes to the control because there is a whip in his hand nature if it is an animal it never takes shortcuts it sincerely follows the straight way but we always try to take shortcuts and hence there needs some kind of commandability 
and he holds that that's very important for him and he got both the things the nirank satvam is there daya karatvam is also there but because the nirank satvam is the one which constantly dominates sometimes when we go and bow before him he may see only the mistakes in us and we do mistakes we born to do mistakes you know we keep doing mistakes can anyone raise their hand that i never committed mistakes in my life anyone i did not <laughs> i can't raise my hand of course i think anybody no one माता सीता जी सेट न कश्चिन्ना पराध्यति वी आर सिटिंग इन द ऑयली सरफेस एंड इट स्टिक्स टू आवर क्लॉथ्स हाउ कैन यू अवॉइड दैट सो वी आर इन दिस अर्थ द अर्थ इज कंसीडर्ड एज इरुल तर मा न्यालम वन ऑफ द आर्वर्स कॉल्ड न मार्वर ए सेंटली a uh, devotee of the lord he says in his tamil song irul tar mangyalam this earth gives only tamas agnana ignorance the nature of this earth and we born here in this earth and in this agnana how we will be escaped from that it's very difficult and hence there will be mistakes also with us probably mistakes only will be with us and when we stand in front of him or sit in front of him and and then we show as if you know the bhakti is overflowing from us <laughs> and ho oh god oh will i this and that and then he says you showing this much of bhakti ha huh? did one two three if the file is opened we know all they only will be seen in us in our files and then he may become like a narasimha will be in trouble then and who will be saving us then he is common for both if he wants he can show compassion but he is always with the supremacy so there is a kind of danger you know for daya and dandana for both are his common but guru is not like that because gurus always come from the side of mother right mother's eye never become red he is kamala patraksha always <laughs> his eyes are always red only <laughs> so it is always you know we should be always pretty careful but for our mother she is considered as asite kshana always cool always black eyes our mother is having only with the compassion infinite compassion she is always takes care of us though sometimes you know knowingly knowingly only we commit mistakes but it is the mother who takes care of us keeps us behind convinces him argues with him and then he makes him to yield for our requirements that is the mother that is what we call as motherly quality so all the acharyas are always following the footsteps of a mother they all followers of mother that's why our ramanuja acharya swami before starting the sharanagati he says om bhagavan narayana abhimatanurupa talking about the mother and prays to the lotus feet of the lord 
taking the shelter with the mother he takes shelter with the mother and prays to the feet of god so it is always safe for us if we hold the feet of the lord because even mother also says hey catch hold of his feet not me because she knows always us and she is always for us so she says you need not come to me you not catch my feet but he always expects that we should catch hold of his feet <laughs> that is his nature father no and so ma- mother says catch hold of his feet and we have to catch hold of the feet of the lord but we should seek the guidance from the mother this is what lakshmana did you know when rama wanted lakshmana to be away from him in the kingdom you need not come to the forest i go to the forest and then he said no no rama please take me with you aham sarvam karishyami jagrataha swapataschate i serve you day in and out whatever services are needed i do that and while surrendering himself he did not see the face of rama because he knows rama may say mm, no so he was just seeing the face of sita only but caught hold of rama's feet sabhratus charanav gaadham nipidya sitam uvacha atisah so valmiki beautifully says lakshmana is holding the feet of rama but just seeing the face of mother sita expecting her grace on him and pray to rama this is what we need to do and all our acharyas simply follow the path of our beloved mother sita mother is our take care so plead with mother but hold the feet of lord that is what we need to do then she takes care of us similarly our acharyas also will take care of us just like the mother and then they argue with the lord in whatever way it is necessary and convinces him to take care of us so guru kripa is like the water and you are like a lotus you are beautiful lotus but don't leave the guru kripa ever guru kripa is the thing which saves us so this is what our acharya start then the son the lord will always take care of you in blossoming he always blossoms the lotus but if you leave that and come to the shore gone he may do this or that he may be able to throw us into the worst of the hells kripami ajasram asubhan asurishweva yonishu you know in bhagavad gita you might have read it you know how serious he became avajananti mam mudha ha manushim tanavasirtam these people not taking care of me so he is you know after all father i think probably you might have seen who takes care of the children most of the times father or mother is only mother sometimes if mother is having some work kept the baby in the cradle and requested the father hey just you know if he wakes up please take care i will be doing some activity and come back and she goes to the you know to her work and if the baby started you know crying when he wakes up 
he sees all the sights and if mother is not seen then he starts crying right what happens when he starts crying and then father goes na na don't cry don't cry don't cry twice and thrice or four times he just says that he tries to take him to his uh, you know laps and try to console him for some time if he's not keeping quiet then he says hmm hopeless guy i can't do anything then he goes to her and says hmm take care of him i just can't control him the moment when she comes and takes the baby he simply becomes calm mother because she is the mother so mother is the personification of love and concern so our acharyas our lineage of acharyas are always under the shade of mother so as a mother showers her grace thus they shower their grace on us and argues on our behalf with the lord convinces him to care of take care of us and that's how we will be saved will be always in safe hands when we are under the shade of gurus it's a great thing it is the great ramanuja acharya swami who is the founder of bhakti sampraday in general thousand years before he talked about equality before ramanuja acharya swami appeared there were so many taboos in the society probably most of you may not be knowing also women were always discriminated women were prohibited in chanting from chanting mantras if anybody chants a mantra they used to say cut the tongue if anybody listens to the mantra fill those ears with the molten lead such was the rigidity in those days before ramon yacharya i'm saying except the priestly people no others are also supposed to chant the mantras and if they chant the same fate as i said just before it was the order of the day i think probably everybody accepting that order we don't know but the system was like that it was ramon yacharya who said this is not the right system because god loves everyone equally not only humans even the animals even the birds even any other creatures like the trees and the mountains and the hills because all these were created by him and when all these are his creation and how that he keeps someone away and how he embraces someone that won't happen and not only that if at all there are some people who are you know under privileged let us say some people used to be called as harijans you know this we i think probably after gandhi ji they were called as harijans but before that they were having some other name if there are some people whom the society is calling as untouchables who are under privileged with few qualities probably god shows his concern more on such people Yes. See, if there are a couple of children to a mother, one is okay, and other one is handicapped, challenged child. Maybe some 
some defects are there in his body or some defects are there in the mind then on whom mother showers her grace first is the one who is okay or is the one who needs lot of attention whom mother loves so much the one who is challenged isn't it if that is the case with a single mother having just two children what about god having these millions of children on whom his concern falls first are on those who are already okay are those who are under privileged god is compassionate and hence his compassion his grace falls on those who are under privileged or who are downtrodden as a mother feels happy if you go and do something to the handicapped baby right so also god will be happy if you take care of such people said that ramanuja acharya swami brought those harijans into the society gave them mantra open temple doors for them made them to have the darshan of the lord and they also started chanting the divine name of god women were brought into the mainstream of the society no discrimination is needed to be shown on anybody because though karma made these bodies in a different different way but the soul inside is always pure and he loves that soul and all souls are equally loved by him with no discrimination at all no partiality at all said this sri ramon yacharya swami gave them different rights to serve the lord and gave women also so many rights to serve the lord so ramon yacharya swami became the iconic personality to talk about equality after ramon yacharya great acharyas many many acharyas came like vallabha acharya nimbarka acharya ramananda acharya chaitanya mahaprabhu and the recent ones like swami narayan so many acharyas came and each one took a part of that bhakti sampradaya elaborated that in their own way took those branches to the far and wide distances of the world and made people understand the concept of bhakti and follow the path of god bhakti i think probably you understand though looks like a very hard word but to know it simply it is just love pure love never expects anything in return yes sir no when the love is so pure it knows how to give it never expects anything to get back from the other end and when you love god with pure heart you don't expect anything from him hey lord do whatever just you want diviva bhuviva mamastu vasaha narakeva where you want to keep me that's not my choice my lord if you want to keep me in the swarga loka yes keep me if you want to keep me in naraka loka keep me wherever you want you keep me i have absolutely no reservations at all but only one condition what is that अवधीरित शारदारविंद चरण ते मरणे चिंतयानी ओनली वन कंडीशन 
let your divine feet be with me can if if you want to keep me in naraka in what way i am bothered throw me if you want to throw your feet into naraka let me also fall there this is what our acharyas always pray to the lord or great uh, um, kulasekhara alwar sings this beautiful song with him so ramanuja acharya swami taught us the process of surrender saranagati and said god is always the form of love let's dedicate ourselves to him and to his service and then he invited all treated all equally you will be surprised to know in those days it was not the government running the societies it was temples running the societies thousand years before i am talking you know vatican right how many of you know vatican who runs the government there it's the church it's a country by itself but run by the church temple always runs the system of the society that was taken from our vedic concepts only understand so temple used to run the society and hence if the temple system is appropriate the society becomes normal let us work with the temple and sri rangam in those days to be the the hub of the temples you know and hence he focused on that you'll be surprised to know in those days in temple of sri rangam he divided all the services when the temple came into his fold he divided all the services right from the gatekeeping right from the services of the lord even right from the inviting devotees into the cities and so on and so forth all the services divided into 20 segments 10 segments he given to priestly people you be with them and 10 segments he gave to normal people of this society from all sections right from boatsmen washermen barbers and pipe uh, what you call them bag pipers or something like that what what you call them to 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 okay ha huh? bag pipers so so like that all services he took plumbers carpenters smiths whether goldsmith or blacksmith or whatever it all services of the society all skills in the society were connected to the temple 50% reservation <laughs> you will be surprised to know then ramanuja gave 50% reservation do you think it's not small thing ramani swami gave it and then made all people sit together be across the table if there are any issues discuss will be solved no courts everything was just across the table but before god before god that is the beauty when you are before god you become so humble when you come out of the temple it's it's normal see because our vision is only with the visible things so when you feel that the presence of lord is there you become so humble and hence let him be the center and let us all rotate around him and then he made the main priest and also the boatsmen 
sit before God and resolve the issues. Giving duties doesn't mean just appointing him with a salary. Ramanuja Swami made a nice arrangement like for each of those families, he allowed some hundreds of acres of land for them to survive, live with that, serve to the Lord. Example, one potter, that's a skill, right? Potters. So for all the potters, he gave some land. They used to live on that land for their all practical requirements, but serve the temple. How? If there are 360 families, each family, if they make pots for one year, they'll be used for one day in the temple. One day. Again, he keeps on making and they'll be used for the next day. And the other family also makes the same thing for the second day, third day. The system introduced by Ramanuja Acharya. You can see that in Sri Rangam, in Badrinath, in Puri Jagannath, in Melkota, in Tirumala, all the places. They were the place, temple cities, they are still remained like that. Other cities, of course, they came out of that system. And if you go to Puri Jagannath, you see, they make all the preparations only in parts. One part used for one day, after the usage, it will be broken part should not be washed and reused. Metallic stuff you can wash and reuse, but clay parts you can't. It's prohibited somehow. So, they used to survive on that. They were given with lot of land and stuff like that. For everyone, barbers, some land. Enjoy the land, serve to the deities. If there are any issues, sit and discuss and resolve before God. He made the entire society as a single family. Family of God. It's a Bhagavad Kutumba. And all are Bhagavad Bandhus. This is the system Ramanuja Swami expected, implemented also. It was in practice for almost 600 years after Ramanuja Acharya. After that, Britishers came, you know well, French, Dutch, British, they again broke the system. Uh, all the taboos, what we see today, came because of these guys, not the old system was existing. After Ramanuja, the system was so great, so wonderful, so nice. But the question, how Ramanuja became such a great person to follow the equality is the question. Because he also came from a very traditional Vedic family. Those Vedic families, when Ramanuja was talking about the reformation, transformation, and he was poisoned, not once, four times in his life. There was attempt on him. Attempt not just like you know, holding a knife and coming on to him. He himself was a great Fahilva. So that will not work on him. When he went to the deities, to the temple, there in the Tirtham they mixed poison and gave him. But he was survived. Then they thought, no, this is not the way. Still very powerful poison we have to give him in the bhiksha, in the prasadam. While bhiksha he used to take, mixed up with the poison, serious poison. God's grace is there, he survived. So, such kind of things will happen to, I think, probably any reformer, no matter where, what type of, and when any reformer, when he wants something good to happen, I think 
there will be some vested interests never allow such things to happen ramanya was not an exemption rama was not an exemption and even things happen for them too in spite of all these things how ramanya became such a broad minded visionary can you understand how ramanya became such a great person with his thought and deed it is just because of the lord who appeared in 108 places and showed this type of equality not only on humans but even in animals and birds and trees and stones like that that became an inspiration to ramanya to become such a great personality god comes down and we can see him also but in which form that is very important for us to understand god appears even now for us we are seeing god are we how many of you understand that where we can see him not in a moving form like this because for kali yuga that is prohibited in kali yuga we can see him in a deity form because it is said god has two types of forms one is visible other one is invisible invisible avyakta visible vyakta vyaktam is what we can see invisible avyakta it is called in bhagavad gita he said maya tatamidam sarvam jagat avyakta murtina in the form of avyakta i am spread all over but there is a avyakta totally no one can see that form but vyakta form yes people can see some people can see some type of vyakta forms visible forms they are considered as five in vaikuntha it seems that he is vyaktam he is visible but only to those who are there called nityas and muktas they are able to see him they are able to interact they are able to serve that's okay but we can't go there may we may go there but we won't come back going there is only one way traffic after going there then we should be there if at all we go so that is not useful for us there is another abode he chose is called kshira sagar there also he is vyakta but he is vyakta only to great sages like sanaka sanandana sanat kumara sanat sujata like people he is visible we no we won't be able to see we won't be able to interact so the paramapadam is not useful and kshira sagar also not useful for us but whenever he comes down to this earth for us taking avataras different different types of appearances he chose to be with us like rama krishna varaha narsimha vamana matsya kurma etc etc unfortunate guys we are you know we missed them we were there probably in, because if we are means now we were there even i you know with them too but somehow we are so clever you know when they are coming from this entry we skipped from this entry maybe we we, we escaped yeah we escaped from him and uh, that is the greatness of us you know as vamana he spread his foot on all the earth covering everything even then also probably just like the rats we might have created some caves and just we entered that so we missed 
So avatars also were only to those people of that time, not useful to us. Gone. He will be there in our hearts. For all of us, is there in the hearts, but we won't be able to see them at all, because this is totally filled up with a lot of nonsense, desires, anger, jealousy, fancies. Many things are filled up here, and hence we won't be able to see them at all. The inner one, so that is also not useful, but. the one he chooses for us because is all pervasive right is all pervasive and he can be in the form also in this form of metal in the form of stone the form of wood the form of paper the form of cloth whichever you chose ye yathamam prapadyante tan stathaiva bhajamya whichever form you want me to take i accept that as my form and then fulfill your desires fulfill your needs that's what he promised he never makes political promises if he promise something means he sticks on to that so he is visible now for us in the form of a deity but we don't believe in him because he is not moving because he is not talking because he is not eating you know some people sang a nice song kaun kehta hai bhagwan khata nahi ma sabri jaise tu khilata nahi you know aap yadi sabri jaise khilane par bhi to ye nahi khata hai na in the dt farm he don't eat at all some people say no swami ji at least you know, he can speak with us when we are going there with all eagerness so okay but you are sitting now here and then he started you know coming forward from there what do you do bhago yahan se bhag bhag kar jayenge not only here even in our homes when you are sitting in the puja then he says hello how are you <laughs> you think oh if god speaks things will be nice but if at all he attempts to speak either your heart will be stopped suddenly or simply you jump out like a spring and then start running never try to see back at all so his purpose is not to speak or move his purpose is to assure you with fearlessness no swami ji i am keeping these many fruits at least you should eat a couple of fruits right it's okay if you keep your fruits there and he started eating you never keep any fruit in front of him yes sir no hmm you prepared a basket full of gulab jam and then you kept it in front of him and the moment you open the eyes he eat everything and do you offer anything next he did not come to you out of uh, you know hunger remember that he came to you to satiate your hunger not his hunger you can't do it anyway you know in the ulagellam oru tuttu aatha alwar says if you even make the entire earth as his food it doesn't you know come even to one tooth of him can you satisfy him with the food no he doesn't eat but he takes it so that you can eat it you know when you bring you bring you with your ahankara i brought it 
when you put it before him he washes it and then he fills it up with his anugraha and it comes back to you this becomes a cup you understand as you offer a nice cup with a coffee to a guest right guest doesn't eat cup right should not eat also and if he eats you will be scared he has to return the cup even if you offer in a gold cup nice coffee and after eating the coffee if he keeps the cup in his pocket do you allow him you won't <laughs> he should give the cup back this offering of yours becomes a plate or a cup where you can offer your ego and there he cleans it and then fills it with his grace gives it back to us and then when we take it his grace is going into us the fruit the plate goes in the normal process but the grace remains with you that's how you become a bhakta otherwise you are you only no but you become bhakta now because of his grace that comes to you so he need not speak but he makes us speak he need not walk he makes us walk in a better way he need not eat he makes us eat there's a purpose he chooses the form of a, a deity archa avatara it is called archa avatara so god appears in the form of archa avatara and he is always with us you can do in a way you like if you are mad sometimes you can give a slap also to him but still he won't say anything you are most humble servant he remains like that with you he comes down to us to accept our services otherwise how can we do some service to him but we don't believe in him because he is not moving eating talking doing things remember you should not do that does he should not scare us and his purpose of coming to us is to remove our fears when he is you are in your home he is very much confined to yourself but temple is not for your own purpose it is for the common purpose of the community so there will be certain rules in your home no rules you do whatever you want he accepts but in temple because it is a common community cause then there comes the agama there a priest there a process there a ritual all these take place but that is called archa avatara there you see him and you need to realize the presence of god and do whatever that you are supposed to do but remember there are so many thousands and thousands and millions of temples but there are few temples where he showed his unparalleled compassion on even the downtrodden and even on animals and birds they became great temples though all are temples but wherever he showed extra compassion that became a sacred place such sacred places were sung by great devotees they became divya deshas understand every place is not called as divya desha though god's presence is there from wherever he showed his extra compassion in some place a frog wanted the grace of god and god appeared for the sake of a frog and blessed that frog and the frog 
became enlightened and said lord because of your grace i am blessed but i request you to be here in the same form you appeared for me and bless all the people here just for my sake because you graced me and i request you for my sake remain here and bless the community here god said that's okay because you are requesting i consider this and then he remained there for whose sake for the sake of a frog that frog became a rishi and he is called murukandu rishi his son was markandeya you know markandeya right that markandeya's father was murukandu and he was like a frog and his grace fell on him blessed him and where his grace fell on him there he remained as a deity and still today he is remaining as a deity only and because a frog yes even a frog okay for him and a great saintly person observed this grace and sang beautifully about his grace and so that place became a divya desa and the deity became divya purusha right and whatever his sang became divya prabandha and the person who sang also became divya suri anything related to his divine manifestation becomes divya i think you you might have read bhagavad gita the 11th chapter when god showed his universal form arjuna sings his grace you know aneka divya bharanam divya you find the word divya with everything with ornaments divya with grace divya with his forms divya with his place divya divya aneka udyat ayudham divya ayudham everything you know related to god never becomes a divya wherever great people realized and sang becomes a divya sanjaya sang so it became divya alvars sang so they became divya such divya desas of the appearance of god and realized by saintly people are considered as 108 108 and they are spread in of course mostly in bharata desa and in india in south and also in north many of them were in south and considerable number is in north like badrinath dwaraka ayodhya naimisharanyam prayag many many places joshi mat you know and uh, dev prayag like this kind of places are all became divya desas appeared for somebody's prayer a bird a vulture prayed for his grace there he appeared became a divya desa ya hari jan sang about him became a divya a lady sang his grace and became a divya desa under so they became divya desas and ramanuja acharya swami visited those places understood that for grace of god nothing becomes a barrier no caste no race no religion no ethnicity becomes barrier for grace of god and it falls on anybody and makes them elevate it this is what ramanuja swami found through the stories of the divya desas 
Ramanujacharya did not make the Vedasas. But those places who became the Vedasas inspired Ramanuja to follow the, the value of equality, to understand the value of equality, to implement that the value of equality in the world and bring out the bhakti concept, the bhakti sampradaya. Of course, it's called Visistha Dvaitam Vitihim and uh, with other acharyas it may be having different different names like achintya bheda bheda with his con people you know suddha dvaita with vallabha acharya like that but bhakti is the core of everything that is what ramanuja acharya swami has given to the world and those divedesas made ramanuja to be a beacon of the light to talk about equality. So in Hyderabad, Ramanujachari Swami statue was, you know, there at 216 feet of height. Many people asked us, Swamiji, why you brought all these temples around? We did not bring those temples. Ramanujachari Swami wanted those temples around him. So they came all around him. And then, uh, why you need them? Because they inspired Ramanuja Acharya. Okay, but why you have to bring them here? So we said, look, Ramanuja Acharya visited all those temples going to those places. And we can't go to all those places to get that inspiration. And if all they are together, you can because we are in the fast age, the speed age. So you need everything should be done, you know, at the just a stroke. And so you can have the darshan of all those 108 here. And then you can get the grace of God. What a kind of grace we get. That's what they ask. I said, look, these 108 Divedesas made one to stand at that height. If you have the darshan, and if you also just understand, and if you surrender, and if you realize, you also grow to that height. You should grow to that height. Ramon Yacharya is at 216 feet of height. For us, have the darshan, get the grace, and grow like me. You also should grow to that height of 216 feet. This is the purpose of Ramanuja Swami, being at that height. You understand? We should also grow like that, but with real values, values of equality. That is the purpose. Every Divyadesam has a beautiful story, and of course, those stories are available on the internet, because you know, Mr. Google is there, and able to elaborate the divine stories of all those places. And uh, we, if we read, we will be able to understand. It's not just by speaking something. So try to read them. And somebody asked her, Swamiji, why you made in Hyderabad? Hmm? To stop people going to those places? I said, wrong. That's absolutely wrong. These are the places to make you realize that such a kind of places are there. Get inspiration here. Go to those places and have the direct darshan of the Lord. Be blessed. These are for you to pave the way. And we are now not able to go even to those places, right? To see at a single stroke. So, here we are trying to do now. 